This is number three in a series on fathers. This is a conversation with Robert Franklin. I would like to introduce everybody to Robert Franklin, one of the people, one of the men in the world that I admire for what he's doing for other men and his work with the National Parents Organization. So, Robert, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've watched your videos a thousand times and uh, <laughs> always wanted to be on one. So, Well, damn, that makes us both happy chance. then because I'm yeah. happy to have you here. You Robert go. introduced me to this book called The Life of Dad. And he and I just hit it off with this. His presentation at the ICMI was on the, this book, The Life of Dad. And I was blown away by his presentation. And so I got the book and since then I've read it and I've been doing a couple of videos on it so far, Robert. <clears throat> and it just is amazing to me. Just absolutely amazing. Right. It, it, it is. And at the same time, it's not because when you think about it, of course, this stuff is true. Yes. That, yes. that, you know, when you, when, when we accept and the, the, the fact that human beings are a biparental species, meaning that mom and dad care for offspring, yes. the vast majority of mammals, social mammals, don't do it that way. That's right. That's uh, right. It, it's uh, mother is the only uh, yep. caregiver uh, yep. to, to, to offspring. Now there is one new world monkey that um, uh, they do it the opposite. Mom, mom bears the child and nurses the child. But beyond that, it's dad. Really? Man, it's dad. Yeah. What kind but, of monkey is that? I, I, I can't remember the name. Huh. Uh, but um, it, it, that's such an outlier. It's it's so rare. Yeah. But when we, when, you know, given the fact that we are one of the five to ten percent of right. social mammals who are biparental, that means something. Yes. And it means a lot in yes. terms of our biochemistry in terms of our brain chemistry it yep. can't not um because it, you know it's an evolved thing but we uh, don't hear much about that eh? we don't we don't hear anything about it yeah. <laughs> as dr Machen points out you, you know uh mothers have been um studied from time immemorial uh and it's only recently that fathers uh, have been yeah. Uh, which, of course, makes no sense <laughs> that it should have taken this long. Yeah, because, really. because, again, if we're a biparental species and we are, then, then that means something. And it has to mean something about our biochemistry. So yes. why not study it? Well, yes. it's taken us a long time to do that. But yes. finally, we are. Yeah. So what interested you the most about the biochemical stuff? Oh, I can't tell you. It's it's all so fascinating. I know. Pick one. The 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 uh, it, the the way that it that our biparental nature came about yes. is amazing. Yes. Because uh, forever and ever we weren't. Right. Forever and ever we did things the way every other social mammal did, which yes. was. Mom has the child, mom nurses the child, that's it, end of story. It's yep. mother or nobody. Yep. But um, 500,000 years ago, give or take, um, uh, children, uh, offspring, newborns, um, our brain size increased dramatically in size. And um, uh, that necessitated a still more immature birth, which meant greater not greater female uh, maternal investment in the child. But other things didn't change. The human females, or in that case, uh, it was uh, Homo heidelbergensis, um, hominid females still only give birth to one offspring. Right. Almost invariably, right. they still uh, take years to develop socially, 
uh, and sexually to where they can have offspring of their own. And what all that added up to was human beings would not have evolved. We would have died out early on because, uh, uh, because there were simply too few babies born in order to make, make it to sexual maturity for the species to continue. Yes. So something had to happen back then. And uh, it, it, if we were to survive as a species, and sure enough, it did. Yep. Mothers started figuring out that there were these guys over here who seemed to show an interest in offspring. And they figured, well, maybe if I mate with them, my offspring will have a greater opportunity to survive. And sure enough, that was right. Yep. That dad could take over um, where uh, at an earlier stage um, of the child's upbringing, um, fire, the acquisition, the, the control of fire, meant that we could cook meat, which made it easier for uh, younger children to eat and digest. Right. And so what all that meant was that mom could wean the child much earlier than she otherwise could, which means that she could begin ovulating much earlier than she otherwise would have, and yep. she could produce another child. And that is what allowed us to exist without, without dads stepping in 500,000 years ago, you and I wouldn't be sitting here. We'd be extinct. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be any computers to, to make anybody's <laughs> life hell. You know, <laughs> we we human beings would have died out along with all the other hominids that yep. died out. Yep. I.e., one hundred percent of them except us. <laughs> yeah. That like, that is one of the things that absolutely fascinates me. It's a mind blower, eh? And I love yeah. the way the author put it. She said. Basically, fathers saved the human race. Right. You know, right. That's literally true. That is literally true. But like Rodney Dangerfield, we don't get no respect around here. Right. Robert. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's that statement of hers. Fathers saved the human race is something that should be emblazoned everywhere. In, yes. You know, in courthouses everywhere until yes. people figure it out yes. um, that that fathers are that, that fathers are necessary. We're not good. I mean, you say we're that that men are good. They we, we are, but it's more than that. We're necessary. Yes. <laughs> we are necessary to the survival of the species. Yes. Period. I end quite of statement. Agree. Yeah. I yeah. quite agree. You know, one of the things that caught me my eye in the book was the whole idea of biobehavioral synchrony. Yes. You know, which was just fascinating to me. And and I'd love to know the mechanism for that. I suspect I think it must be smell. Yeah, I think it must I think be smell. I, but I, for I, those I, of you who don't know what we're talking about, biobehavioral synchrony <laughs> is this thing that happens in between the mother and the father and the baby where their hormones become synced with each other. Right. automatically this is not something that you know they get an injection of this or that they right. automatically get synced right right and and mothers and fathers do yes. this, that during yeah. during mom's pregnancy they sync up their oxytocin levels yeah and what that does is it gets them ready it says hey you're not just a free agent anymore you're about to be a parent and that that's uh, a big change and you need to get your act together. Yes. And they do. Yes. And, and along with the oxytocin yeah. increase comes the testosterone decrease. Correct. For, oh. for males, um, which tells the male, uh, you know, you, you need to pay attention to your uh, family, your offspring. Yes. Uh, and not be catting around out there uh, looking for more females to mate with. Um, but you you need to start acting like a dad, and and that works. Uh, and at the same time, dad's not out there taking risks. 
that that testosterone tends to promote risk taking yes, behavior, yes. and so it, he's more likely to survive. Um, and I I think too more careful. The diminishing testosterone has to do with the man's different ideas of striving for status, because we know now that testosterone is about striving for status, right. and so he's going to strive for status in a smaller field of play, right, right. in his family rather than right. in the world outside, right. And right. that kind of pulls him into the center. Right. You know? And, uh, of course, ideally, um, uh, mom will grant him that status. Um, <laughs> and others will, too, of course, yes. that, that the status of father is very different from the status of, uh, you know, king or uh, top lawyer in the firm or something <laughs> like that. Yes, um, that and and it is a status that um, everyday people tend to honor more than our institutions honor. That's a nice way of saying. That's a very <laughs> nice way to say it, but it's the truth. It's so um, the oh yeah yeah ay 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 yeah. But yeah, um, and then um, after birth. Uh, when, well, mom and baby synchronize biologically right. in, during pregnancy and shortly thereafter, nursing, things like that. And dad does too with physical interaction between him and the child. He and the child sync up their oxytocin levels and dopamine comes in and rewards that behavior and everybody's happy. Yep. It reinforces the child is it. happy. The dad is happy. And, um, and it just goes on like clockwork from there. One of and the, it's an, a, once again, a necessary thing for children. One of the most amazing things in the whole book to me was when she talked about the idea <laughs> that the child's, the infant's oxytocin raised up when mom was nurturing and cooing. Oh, baby, 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 right? right? The, the child's right. oxytocin went up. Right. But with the father, it didn't go up with the nurturing behavior. The child's right. oxytocin went up with the child's exploratory play with father. Right. You know, and the, child's, right. the father's rough and tumble stuff, that's right. what did it. Isn't that fascinating? Right. And, with, and, and that behavior on the part of the child positively reinforce his behavior on the part of the dad. Exactly. So because his, synchrony, his oxytocin right. would go up too. Right. You know, exactly. And then the dopamine reaction would come and it would reinforce that. And so it pushes right. him. And evolution's a pretty smart an amazing, cookie, eh? An amazing thing. It's <laughs> amazingly complex and wonderful. And uh, another thing about this is that as, she, as Dr. Mocken points out, Evolution abhors duplication of roles. And it so loves when efficiency. You have two parents, they're not supposed to parent the same. Right. There right. are a lot of messages in society right now that if you're being a good dad, you know what that means? It means you're acting like mom. And a that's man. not right. Exactly. That is incorrect. Exactly. On, uh, on the most basic possible evolutionary level that is incorrect yes. you need to act like dad exactly you act like dad and mom acts like mom everything's working the way it should exactly and so that's yet another message and that dad simply wrong. do not get reinforced for dad behavior right get reinforced for mom behavior and, and indeed you know if you're and out there in the yard tumbling over with the kid some neighbor's going to walk by and report you to cps <laughs> you know That's true. i mean and it's the truth it's true um, it's sad yeah. but true yeah and yeah. and that it's a, it's wrong doug yeah. r-o-n-g wrong Really, and he, anyone who's read this book dad. will see how wrong it really is. Right, and we need to we need to teach dads that that behavior is right for you and for the child. Yes, and what you do naturally is right for that child. Right, right. You know, because dads do this shit automatically. They don't have to go to the book and go, oh, "What should I do next?" They do right. it automatically. Absolutely. And, but they're not reinforced for it by our culture. Our culture looks down on it. Right. And dads, you're important. You're, what you're doing for your child is so critical. 
You betcha. For, for their later development, yeah, it's just instrumental in their right. development. Right. And, and you're taught not to do that. Keep doing what you think is right. You know, right. you're probably right. Right. Well, oh. you, you know the the um, you know maternal behavior tends to teach the child that it is loved. Right. And and, and that builds the child's self esteem. That is a wonderful and necessary thing. You are, you are valued, you are good, you are worthwhile. Yeah, that's right. But guess what else is true about human society? What else is true about human society is that there are damn few mothers out there. Your mo- your, you have one mother, you know, you have one father, you may have a brother or a sister or a grandmother or something. All of them love you. But you know what? The cashier at the supermarket doesn't. The teller at the bank doesn't. The police officer who stops you for speeding does not love you. You need to know how to interact with those people or you're going to be in a world of hurt. Most of your interaction throughout your life is is social interaction with people you don't know or don't know well and who have no connection to you. And if you don't know how to negotiate the shoals of human society in everyday interaction, you're in trouble, buddy. You are in trouble. And, and that, how is, does that tell is what us. dads teach. Exactly. And how do they do it? It's the external. Mom is internal. Dad is external. And that, that's even true of the way parents carry their children. Mom, it's face to face. It's right. chest to chest. Right. Dad, it's looking out. Yes. Child is looking out. Yes. He's the same thing that dad sees. Um, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's true, but it's also yes. metaphoric for oh, yeah. which, what, what does, you know, what does dad do for the child? He teaches the child about, about the world outside. Think about it. Mother, uh, dad, dad and child are roughhousing a little bit. Child grabs dad's hair and pulls it. Dad says, ow, hey, that hurts. The child just learned its effect, its impact on the world, that that I have an impact on the world. I affect others. And and in that small way, uh, I, I have, I can see my impact on the world around me. And that's, it's just a small thing, but it shows what, uh, what dad's uh, interaction with children do. Um, it can and, be and, very and, subtle. Anyway, that, uh, yeah, but, but, it, 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 but it's not so subtle. It, it's right. uh, very important yes. uh, that, that uh, you know, the child experiences and learns um, uh, it's, what can I say, it's, it's impact. They learn the difference between violence and aggressive fun. Right, right. And that's a very subtle, it's a subtle kind of thing to learn. And it takes a while. And dad teaches that. No, no, you don't pull hair. You don't poke in the eye. Got it? Okay, dad. And then you go off and play and and be aggressive and do this and that. But you don't poke the eye and you don't pull a freaking hair. Right. And this is dad teaching. What are the limits in human interaction? And the book was fascinating on that front. (laughs) looking at the kinds of things that kids learn in, in rough and tumble play and how those do play out later in their relations with other people. Yeah. Absolutely mind blowing. Right. And of course, you know, what do we see with fatherless males? We see see males who, who not only don't know their impact in the world, don't know the difference between violence and, and healthy aggression. Right. But, you know, the, to, to my mind, who are trying to make an impact, who, who are trying to see their own impact, anybody who, you know, gets out in a, in a gang fight or who shoots up, you know, shoots up this bar or something like that, is that not one thing that they are trying to show themselves, their own importance, their own impact in the world? Yes. That if they had only pulled daddy's hair and said, and he said, Hey, wait, that hurts me. 
they might not be doing that stuff. No kidding. Yeah. It's so sad to see yeah. what's happening in the world today, knowing that it's a lack of fathers. Right. Almost 40% of our school age kids don't live with a biological dad. Right. It's insane. It's it is. absolutely insane. It is. Well, I mean, uh, back in the 90s, you know, David Blankenhorn's right. book, Fatherless America. Right. I mean, that spelled out a whole lot of stuff. Now, Blankenhorn had the wrong, wrong idea about how fatherlessness comes about, but he had <laughs> the right idea about its impact right. on society. Right. Uh, and he was right then and he's right now. Yes. And basically every single social policy, law, social policy that we have contradicts the science on the value of fathers, children, huh. just about everyone. And I, you know, I can by God make a list, but, um, <laughs> but we do it so wrong. And, and, you know, reading uh, Dr. Mocken's book and preparing for my uh, speech in Chicago, mm. um, it was just screaming in my ear, you know, how how profoundly stupid and wrong we are about our policies, uh, our our public policies, our public discourse, our laws. It's just it just is wrong from start to finish. Well it's said. Astonishing. That's exactly Ama right. amazing that we can even be doing as well as we are. And it's amazing our, that fathers still do the right things. Right. You know. Right. I right. mean, it's amazing. God bless all the fathers out there. You bet. You, know, you bet. For uh, doing what they know is right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though evolution, they're shit for uh, it. evolution turns out to be a powerful thing. <laughs> oh, boy. Exactly. Uh, you know, that, exactly. that um, it turns out, and, and, you know, I've said this a, a thousand times on in my writing, if I've said it once, uh, and, and that is that whatever policymakers are doing, whatever the media say, say um, uh, we the people tend to behave differently. We tend to stick to the, um, the things that we've always done. Right. I, I mean, look at mothers, you know, women, despite just astonishing amounts of messages that say what you really want to do is go to work and be a high powered lawyer. You know, you don't want this motherhood thing, despite all those messages. In fact, they do. In fact, they opt for motherhood. Really? And absolutely. It's in, it's in countless data sets. Look at, Dr. Catherine Hakim's work, and she used to be with the London School of Economics. Um, but everywhere, I mean, from the smallest, you know, uh, what's it called, qualitative stuff, um, a woman in, um, a journalist in New York named, uh, I don't remember what, uh, yes, Judith Warner, um, did, a, did a little study of 22 women who were, you know, high powered lawyers. They were graduates of MBAs, you know, high powered MBA schools and stuff like that, who had dropped out to when they had their first child, they dropped out. 21 out of 22 of them didn't go back. Is that so right? They, yeah. And when the, when the child was sort of up and running and, you know, in school or whatever, they could have taken up where they left off but they didn't 21 out of 22 of them wow. didn't. That's interesting. Yeah. From yeah. my perspective, daycare seems pretty damn popular. Well, it's all too popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a necessary thing um, because, you know, parents do have to work, uh, but, but, um, you know, daycare is not a good thing. Uh, for <sighs> it, it uh, damages, it increases their cortisol levels and, and you know, that has long-term effects, huh. particularly on the young ones. So uh, it increases but, cortisol. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Cause cortisol is a stress hormone. For, right. Right. You don't right. know that. And well, you take a, you know, a one year old out of its family and says, Hey, you're going to spend eight hours a day here. 
<laughs> of, course, of course, it's stress level goes down. Yeah, really? Yeah, you don't know any of these people in this totally strange atmosphere, but see you later. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> that's not. Uh, yeah, of course. True. Your cortisol go, level goes up and uh -huh. stays up, and uh -huh. those prolonged levels of increased cortisol have bad effects yeah, on, yeah. Ch uh, on children all the way into adulthood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in many different ways, psychologically and educationally. Stuff like that. Anyway, so we kind of digressed to daycare. That was my fault. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun digression. Just the whole yeah. daycare <laughs> thing just drives me nuts because we're taking kids from the parents who love them right, and giving them to people who don't. Who don't care like, about them. <laughs> yeah, What's wrong with this picture? Yeah, you're a source of revenue. You know, one year old. Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, it, it, it's a real problem, and I yes. uh, invade against it many times yes. and gotten some real blowback on those. Really, uh, the, on, on that writing, uh, yeah, uh, people who, uh, you know, willingly deny the science on daycare and huh. who just just get up and shout, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. sounds like feminists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's uh, you know, you're anti-woman. You're trying to turn back the clock. No, actually, I'm trying to acquaint people with reality so that they can make the best decisions they can make. And trying to help children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. what's Again, bad about that? Yeah, daycare is, is a necessity, but, yeah. but people need to know the reality. They need to know the truth. Yeah, uh, because, well, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not so sure it's a necessity, but but what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my history is that my wife and I both went part time when our kids came. Right. So we were able to kind of one parent was there all the time, right. most of the time until the kids got close to school age, which is ideal. It was which wonderful, is, Robert. It was just it's, it's the ideal. Yeah. And I wish more people could do that today. Right. You know, you'd have to cut down on your lifestyle a little bit, I think. Right. You know, right. but it's worth it because really yeah. it was just, uh, yeah. Amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. So what else about this book caught you? Well, um, or are we close to being finished? Well, um, it's one of those things that, um, we could go on and on I know, I know. Or not as the case may be. Um, it's up to you. Yeah. Well, let, let me just, um, let me go through one thing. Um, and that is uh, to, uh, people need to understand that parenting behavior is not, um, a, from an evolutionary standpoint, you know, most species don't parent their offspring. Only social mammals do. Right. Uh, and, and, and birds. Uh, right. Birds do it big time. Um, but insects don't do it. Reptiles don't do it. Um, and so why the difference? Well, the difference is that parenting behavior is not in the interest of adults. I mean, uh, you're a uh, member of a species that's out there trying to survive a very dangerous world. And so what are you going to do? You're going to blow off your own interests in order to pay attention to a little creature that, that eats, but doesn't get food that attract that's slow and weak and attracts predators and stuff like that. Why would you do that? Yeah. Well, the answer is you wouldn't unless you have these hormones, these certain hormones like oxytocin, prolactin, cortisol, um, estradiol, etc., that change your behavior. And, and, of course, receptors for same in your brain. Yes. That change your behavior. Yes. Um, but uh, from from entirely selfish to mostly selfless. Yes. I.e. Uh, so so it, it you know uh, 
experiments have been done with lab animals. For example, they inject lab animals with these hormones and lab animals that are not pregnant, not expecting, uh, don't have any uh, offspring in the nest, all of a sudden start acting like parents. They start <laughs> building a nest. They start laying in supplies of food and stuff right. like that. Um, the, the point being that um, from an evolutionary perspective, um, uh, these hormones and receptors for them in the brain were necessary for social mammals to exist, i.e. mammals that, uh, or animals that took care of their offspring and socialized them over long periods of time. Basically, you look at an alligator or a lizard or a snake, um, and uh, they're not social creatures, and they're basically, when they're hatched, they're released out into the world, and it's good luck to the best <laughs> you can, you know, because you have everything up here that I, the adult, have, you yep. know, in terms yep. of how to get along. Um, and as such, they're pretty limited creatures in ways that we are not. We right. are vastly more complex in our interactions than they are. And that's how mammals got to exist, is these hormones that, that encourage adults to behave in ways that they otherwise would not, huh. i.e. to care for, for offspring. Yeah. And that allows socialization to exist, and that allows us to exist. Yes. And that's a, it's, a, it's a key concept that people need to understand. Yes, and one that the author, I think, hammered at. Right. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, it's important stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good stuff. Are we finished? Yeah, we can be. Tell people a little bit about the National Parents Organization, if you would. Okay. Would you mind? You know, no, not at all. National Parents Organization is the oldest um, and um, most effective uh, or nonprofit organization in the country and I think in the world um, promoting family court reform. And what that means is equality in custody decisions, reform of child support laws, um, reform of adoption laws, um, et cetera, et cetera, reform of uh, I won't say um, uh, paternity fraud laws because there aren't any, <laughs> but um, things like that. Um, and we are, are, we have been very effective. We have passed the one and only presumption of equal parenting law in the world. Kentucky. Um, in the state of Kentucky, yeah, uh, two years ago, yeah, um, and we are very hopeful of getting more of that in other states in, in the next couple of years. That's a huge deal. It is a huge deal. That's a huge deal. <laughs> That's just so fantastic. Right. And people are seeing that as a model. I think, aren't they? Yes, I. Yeah. They, they are. We're getting we're getting calls from. Um, Right. state legislators in yes. other states saying, hey, yes. what about this? Yes. And, uh, very importantly, um, we are doing um, studies. We are conducting or having, having a, a polling organization do polling um, to see, you know, how are, how are people acting in the state of Kentucky? Because one of the, the, the pushback that you get from anti-shared parenting organizations is, oh, if we have shared parenting, well, all of this stuff is going to happen. There's going to be more domestic violence. There's going to be more conflict between parents and children right. who suffer right. at the end of the world and stuff like that. Well, guess what? 
none of that is true. And so, so in fact, the opposite is true. In fact, the opposite is true. So uh, in, in, in fact, there is less conflict in divorce. There are more, there, there are more parents who are agreeing uh, between themselves. Um, there are fewer allegations of uh, violence or child abuse, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it's still early, um, but we are, we are also doing that polling uh, so that uh, to, to find out, well, what actually does happen when yeah. you pass a law like this. Yeah. And yeah. so far, the news is excellent. The news is good. Yeah. We like good news. We do. We do. Feminists don't like good news. No, no. They Not this kind, bad. anyway. They prefer, they prefer <laughs> cataclysm and, and uh, so and, forth. And, and, and domestic they, violence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, <laughs> look, at, look at what's going on in Australia. In Australia uh, lately, they are, have decided to do another, the government has decided to do another inquiry into what the hell is going on in family courts. Well, feminists are up in arms about that. They are screaming bloody murder. Why? Because they just had a, an inquiry done that they liked. And the, you know, that inquiry was to the effect that, well, we should just scrap this whole shared parenting idea um, and, you know, do what, well, Australian law had required judges, and this is a quote, to consider equal parenting. Not to, not to order equal parenting, <laughs> no indeed. Yeah. But to consider doing so. Consider chopping this, your foot off. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> this this uh, uh, inquiry was, needless to say, received uh, with plaudits uh, by feminists that right. said, right. "That said, no, we need to scrap even the consideration of equal parenting." Well, so that inquiry was so badly done and so abhorrent. I mean, I wrote several things about it, just trashing it. It was so badly done. Yeah. Um, that the government has said, okay, 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 we're going to do another one. And really? feminists are screaming bloody murder. Oh, it's interesting. I did not because, know the history of that. Yeah, 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 because the news threatens to be good. Really? <laughs> yeah, really? We can't have that. No, we cannot have good news for feminists, Robert. Oh, The Guardian <laughs> published the most misandric stuff one side yeah just amazing yeah 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 anyway oh, well yeah interesting national parents organization yes and yes. the url for them i'll put it up on the screen and i'll leave it in the in the info box below because it's a yeah. good organization robert you've been with them for a while now right 11 years yeah, uh, yeah. I've, been, I've been writing stuff for them and, and i serve on the board of directors yeah um, yeah, I've been writing <clears throat> at least five pieces a week for 11 years. Is that right? That. I did not yeah, know that. Yes. Over three five thousand a week? pieces. Yeah, 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 over three. Well, we'll have to leave a link in the low bar, too, for your, your stuff you've written. Well, please so, do. So I can find it. <laughs> National five Parents Organization. I, dot, I, dot I, org. I see maybe one a week from you or something like that. How, do, how did I miss all those? Well, I've been reducing. Uh, I've been cut back lately, but I'm about to ramp up again. All yeah, right, ramp was, up. Yeah, ramp well, up. I was out of town. You know, I was out of town. I know. I know how I it goes. I was sick and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was good but, to have you back, boss. Yeah, check the archives, man. There, there's. Well, we'll, have, we'll leave a link to the archives, too. You bet. Good you bet. stuff. I yeah. really appreciate no, your NPO, input. NPO today. is a good organization, and they we are. are getting better. We yes. have. We have some good financial support uh, who, uh, from people who like what we're doing. Good. And one, one of our projects is uh, that we're working on is a child support project. Huh. We're going to take that. We're going to take that bear on pretty soon. Good. Um, uh, that that we are going to produce the facts about child support because, of course, no one the, the media aren't reporting the facts about child support. Right. They routinely get it wrong right. um, and, and mislead. 
So we're going to do that, and we're going to start. We're going to start trying to change right. child support. When's that coming out? You think the child support? I'm, so, I'm sorry. When's that going to come out? I am not sure. Uh, uh, my guess is the end of the year, um, but but I, I, I haven't. It's only a couple uh, of months. Yeah, I, I uh, you know I've gotten a couple of reports from the people who are doing uh, the work, um, and the last one was like a month ago. So I'm I'm not really sure of a time schedule, but I would say end of the year. Yeah. So any pre-publication scoops for us? Just it's just damned astonishing. Really? You know, <clears throat> there are still states out there charging 10 and 12 percent per annum interest on arrearages. Oh, now, can you imagine that? Name me an investment that you can get that return. No. Oh, that's right. There aren't any. <laughs> well, but, you know, what, what are, what's a, what's a triple A bond paying these days? Not Nothing. much. Yeah, you really. know? But you know who, who owes child support? Men who earn under $10,000 a year. Right. See, you know, Walmart can't pay 10% on its bonds. The U S certainly can't pay 10% on its bonds, but Joe, Dokes, who's living in a cardboard box, he can. Oh God! See, does that, that make sense? Doesn't it? That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but that's yeah. We've known that for a long time, but right. but um, you know, basic yeah. the, the the basic reality of child support is that it has nothing to do with child support. Really, everything to do <laughs> because with women. If it did, uh, it would be entirely different. Yes. Yes. Consider the fact. That. I'm going on and on. I know I am, but consider the fact that <clears throat> the state of Texas, where I live, if you want to be a foster parent and you want to foster one child in your home, they will pay, the state of Texas will pay you about $670 uh, per month uh, to do that. Now, that strongly suggests that the state of Texas believes that six hundred and seventy dollars is enough to care for that child. I mean, yeah. they wouldn't ask you to go in the hole in order to be a foster parent. That wouldn't make any sense. So in right. fact, right. you're going you're going to try to make a little money on that deal. So six hundred and seventy dollars is it is is plenty according to the state of Texas. Now, what that means is that if mom has the child 100% of the time and dad has the child zero, dad should pay mom half of $670, which is $365, I think. Give or take. Close. No, that's not right. That's, that's all right. Anyway, Don't worry about it. Anyway. 335, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. But of course, you know, you look at child support schedules and they bear no resemblance to that. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah. Um, Anyway, we don't we don't need to go into that in detail. But well, that's, that's that's good that, to hear about, though. Yeah, that's good to hear about because that's that's it's our, our next big problem. And we'll have to have you back when that comes out, man. Okay, we'll do. You'll do that. Always glad to talk to you. Good deal, Robert. It's so good to talk to you. Yeah, I love yeah. you dearly, and uh, yep. we'll see you in a couple months you. at least. Yeah, yeah, good. All right, good. you I'll take care. You we'll see you. Okay, keep up the good work. And you too, boss.